a lot of really smart people have spoken about AI, technological advances, and their implications for the entire planet. And recently, Stephen Hawking let his opinions known. And Futurism, which did a report based on a previous report by Business Insider, kind of broke everything down. And it's really interesting, but also scary, to delve into Hawking's ideas for the future and what he thinks is inevitable. And in a column, Hawking said, quote, The automation of factories has already decimated jobs in traditional manufacturing, and the rise of AI is likely to extend this job destruction deep into middle classes, which only the most caring, creative, or supervisory roles remaining. We've heard over the years, companies like McDonald's kind of eliminating people who take your order by installing a little touch screen. In fact, they're already here. And I think that was inevitable. It was going to happen. If you consider the entire idea behind technology in general, it's to make things more efficient for people. And while that efficiency is generally good, it does come at costs. In this case, the need for human labor. And as Hawkins points out to technology and AI automating, automizing blue collar roles, yes, it's absolutely true. You know, 3D printing is still very much in its, in its infancy. It can already print houses, print vehicles. There's a port out the other day. A very massive mansion complex in China was built without any humans, maybe a few engineers who <laughs> made the machine. And that thing printed an entire house, their entire skyscrapers all across the country, eliminating the need for humans that were traditionally blue collar jobs. A lot of you might have known that. But now it's, it's not just blue collar jobs, it's white collar jobs as well. And there was a report done, which Futurism reports to us. It was done by Citibank in collaboration with Oxford University. And this report came out in February, and it predicted that 47% of U.S. jobs are at risk of automation. In the UK, it's 35. In China, it's 77%. That is crazy. 70% of jobs in China could very well be done by machines. I guess it's not that crazy when you consider that they're the manufacturing powerhouse and manufacturing has seen incredible advances due to machines that can, you know, put several pieces of an item together at faster and faster rates while minimizing mistakes. So maybe it's not. But it is going to have amazing implications for all human beings on the planet. And Hawking's adds his kind of political explanation or what he thinks the reaction is is pretty interesting as well and he says that we're living in a world of widening not diminishing financial inequality in which many people can see not just their standards of living but their ability to earn a living at all disappearing it's no wonder then that they're searching for a new deal, which Trump and Brexit may have appeared to represent. Now, in my opinion, I don't think Trump rep 
represents a new deal at all. It's basically everything we've been doing for the past 30 years, you know, neoliberal policies, finding a cheaper solution to everything, no matter if it destroys jobs in whatever country, as long as it costs costs. And I think Trump is going to do all those things, but just on steroids. So even more massive tax cuts for transnational corporations, super rich people and whatnot. However, I very much look forward to being wrong, and I hope I'm wrong. And if I am wrong, I'll be the first to apologize to Trump. And if he happens to fix everything, I'll, <laughs> I'll join his team. But I personally think that's very unlikely to happen. But yeah, like Hawking's mentioned, you know, we have so many people around the world struggling to find jobs. Not because they're useless, not because they're unskilled. They went to university, went to trade schools, they went to tech schools, they got all their training. But they can't find, you know, a slot for themselves in an office. And a big reason why is because a lot of these big companies who maybe 20 years ago hired 40,000 people around the world this same company today can reach an even greater amount of efficiency in hiring, you know, 30,000 people. So companies are leaner and they're more efficient. You know, when I was doing my master's, one of the great case studies we did was on GE back in the day of Jack Welsh when he was CEO. And Jack Welsh, he basically, he fired all the people he thought were useless, which are thousands of people, which were used to do very important jobs. And with advances in technology, of course, his company performed better, made more money, people worked harder. The company did better with less people. And when you add AI, being able to not just make jobs easier, but completely take care of the job itself. You know, of course, it's going to affect regular people. And since we're still very much, our economy is structured around human labor and the wage associated with that labor, to purchase goods in the free market. It's no wonder why we're seeing these clashes right now. It's because we haven't really transitioned or rethought the way we do things in relation to purchasing items and whatnot. So, you know, there's another report uh, came out last month or so. And they say, like, 30% of the jobs in general will be automated in the next 20 years or so. In fact, 98% of the jobs could be automated by the end of the century. And this isn't just my take on it. This is people like Sam Harris, people like Sundar Pichai, CEO of Google. People who are very much in this industry and have I guess, very personal, in-depth insight into what's going on. Because these people direct, to a certain extent, where technology takes us. And they're saying jobs are a dying breed. And this is ever more reason why I think it's important we talk less about creating jobs and more about what do we do when all the jobs are gone. So things like the universe, universal basic income, I think is a far more relevant discussion to have than you know, creating jobs for tomorrow that could be replaced the day after. But Hawking tends to have a, according to what he said in this article, tends to have a very dark view of where this is going and he could be right let's keep it real 
He's a legitimate genius. <laughs> he, his whole career was, you know, big ideas and whatnot. I, however, think we can avoid this dystopian future by using our technology, wealth, empathy, and understanding of things by creating, trying to create a life, meaningful life for everyone. I don't think, you know, our lives, our future has to be like, you know, ever played Fallout 4 with people surviving a post-apocalyptic world? Yeah, I don't think it has to be like that. Could it? Who knows? Hawking thinks it possible and he says combined with other issues overpopulation climate change disease we are hawking ones at the most dangerous moment in the development of humanity humanity must come together if we are to overcome these challenges he says and he's absolutely right there's no stopping technology and its advances in fact it's the only thing for thousands and thousands of years that have basically moved the human race forward and that's not going to change the only thing that's gonna you know in my opinion make this benefit the greatest number of people is if we have an important discussion around how we approach this So, time will tell. Seems like the world's becoming pretty crazy every year. But, depending on how we react to these changes, we can make the future a very good place. Now, he says, Hawking, the development of AI could spell out the end of the human race. It would take off on its own and redesign itself at an ever-increasing rate. Humans who are limited by slow biological evolution couldn't compete and will be superseded. Again. Could very well be. I don't know. I hope that doesn't happen. But... You know, once we stop just thinking in dollars and currencies and maybe rethink what our purpose is on this planet, I think we can find a way to overcome this challenge. And I think part of the way of getting there is ending this connection in our minds that if you're not working, you're useless or you're subhuman or your leech on the system because according to these reports if that idea sticks in a world where jobs are all gone we're all gonna be leeches on the system and all be useless because we're not working according to that definition so given that idea jobs the idea of having a job is quickly becoming a thing of the past. We need to ask ourselves, what's a better use of our time? Can we use it learning new things, trying to solve problems, as opposed to sitting in a cubicle and doing a bunch of grunt work that you hate? I happen to think the former is a better use of time but that's just my opinion now if you have any value you'd like to add to this please as always comment below forward another article that sheds light on this issue that futurism maybe didn't or that I overlooked or send a response video but that's it for today thanks a lot